All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the five biggest bad lead generation habits that we have in our business. Let's wait for some more people to go ahead and hop on this webinar. Okay. Good morning, you guys. Welcome to David Durham. This is the five biggest bad lead generation habits that we have in our business. Thank you so much for joining. If you guys could just let a few more people hop on today and then we are going to hop right into it. Okay. A few more people joining. We got some people joining via phone, via on the computer. Here's what I want you guys to do in the chat box. Write one good thing that's happened today. I always start things on a good foot. So I want to hear one good thing that has happened today, and then we will hop right into it. We've got 45 minutes. There is so much content that we have got to cover. This is my first webinar, so bear with me a little bit. I didn't realize how much content I was putting into one webinar. And the matter of the fact is you guys need to have a notebook, a pen handy to take notes. After the webinar, you guys will all have a chance to watch a replay. I'll email it out to you um, in order to do that, okay? So let me go ahead and share my screen and we can go ahead and get started. Okay, you guys should be able to see my screen right now. So if you do me a favor, write in the chat box that you guys can see my screen and say I am ready. And once I see that, we will go ahead and get started. You know, I'm not actually seeing the chat box right now. So don't worry about it. There should be a QA and a if you guys have any questions and answers. If you guys have any questions at the end of this, I'll take questions. We'll also take a break in the middle of it to answer any questions that you guys might have. Like I said, this is my first one, so bear with me a little bit. and. Just like I mentioned, I'm not even sure there's a chat box, so don't worry about it right now. Let's just hop into this. I'm gonna provide as much value as possible for the next 45 minutes. Okay, so first thing first. Who is David Durham? Who am I? Who the heck am I? Some of you guys might know me, and for those that don't know me very well, I'm a performance coach. So what that means is I help sales individuals and entrepreneurs make more money in their business. How in the world did I get into becoming a coach? Well, I was in real estate and fell in love with real estate. I love the entrepreneurship side of it, running my own business, the uncapped potential of income I could make that I know many of you guys are doing the same thing. Whether you're financial advising, whether you're in real estate, whether you're a mortgage broker, right? Marketing companies, whatever it might be. So when I was in real estate, I built a six figure business within my first year. And in doing that, I was actually asked to teach classes, experienced agents, new agents. And so I would go teach these classes and I had so much fun. So I realized when I got into real estate, the first thing I wanted to do was build a seven uh, level team so I could go out and coach and speak. And then after I started teaching, I learned how much I actually loved helping so much more than helping someone buy or sell a home. And so I decided to go all in. And ever since I now run a full-time coaching practice, I'm still pushing away deals out of real estate and going all in on my business. So that's who I am today, you guys. Let's go ahead and hop right into the five biggest bad lead generation habits that we have within our business. And one more thing, the goal of this webinar is to take one, maybe two, okay, one, maybe two nuggets, to go implement in your business. There's gonna be so much content that it might be a little bit overwhelming to take it all and go implement it. So throughout this webinar, find that one piece, that one or two pieces that if you go implement this, it will make a difference within your business. And that's the mistake a lot of people make is they wanna read all these books and go to all these, these webinars and all these classes and they try to implement everything. And that is a huge mistake. Find those things that can just tweak your business a little bit to make it that much stronger. Make your processes that much better and make your income and your impact 
that much bigger. So the first big and bad lead generation habit that we have in our business is social media. That poses the question, why? Why are we gonna talk about social media? Because the biggest, one of the biggest bad habits people have is the lack of utilizing social media for themselves. On pewinternet.com, it says 68% of Americans use Facebook. Not only that, 79% of American uh, of adults use Facebook. Now, hey, I get it. This is just one platform. You can see on the screen, right, there's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube. You guys, social media is what's up and coming. It's clear. I mean, we're not going to hop into Facebook ads and how to do all that stuff. What I'm going to give you to walk away with today is I think I have six tips and tricks. Implement these into your social media. It's easy to do. It's not going to take much time, but it'll change it from becoming a bad habit to something powerful that you use that comes second nature. That's the exciting part about it. We've got to get ahead of the curve because if social media, it used to be a joke. 10, 15 years ago, right? It was just for fun. Now it's becoming the base for business. Huge companies are taking their ads off of TV. Why? Because where are people looking on commercials? They are looking at their phones, right? People are taking ads off of even Pandora and all those other apps because what? It costs two to three bucks a month to get ad-free listening. So social media is where everybody's at. So how about we learn to maximize where everybody's at and make it easy? Here's a, uh, a great question. So why in the world are people not using social media? Well, many times people could say, ah, it doesn't work. It's not this. It's not that. Here are the real reasons that we have four blocks within us. Okay. There's a gremlin, there's assumptions, interpretations, or limiting beliefs. And those are what stop us from moving forward. So let's talk about that. Why people don't use social media. Maybe they say, uh, eh, social, it doesn't work. Right? Promoting a picture of my product or how I can help them on Facebook. It just doesn't work. Okay. So let's take a step back for a moment. Let's talk about why you believe it doesn't work. Is it a gremlin in your head talking to you saying, you're not good enough and nobody, nobody cares about what you're posting? Is it a gremlin consistently chattering in your ear? Because if so, I could see why you would believe that social media doesn't work. Maybe it's because you have tried it in the past. You've tried boosting and posting and it hasn't worked. And so therefore, because of that past assumption, it's not going to work in the future. So that poses the question, why did the, the last time have to be like this time? Why can't it be different going forward? But we're a different person now, right? We know more things now. Why can't we have a different result? Maybe instead of an assumption, it's an interpretation as to why they believe ah, social media just doesn't work. Maybe it's because they've posted before and didn't get any engagement. And since they did that, they figure nobody liked it. Well, my question would be, how would you know that they didn't appreciate that information just because they didn't like it? Are we jumping to conclusions here? So these are all the things that we need to be thinking about. There's all these blocks. I could go literally a whole webinar on each of these topics, social media in the next four. And like I said, as my first one, I put so much content into one webinar. So I've got to stay at surface level. At the end of this webinar, we'll have that opportunity to dive deep. If that's something you're interested in doing, we absolutely can. Okay, but I want us to recognize even if they give you another excuse why people don't use social media, it always ties back to our limiting blocks internally and what we believe about it. And we've got to figure out why we believe it. How in the world can we break through it to start maximizing social media? Because it's easy. What I'm going to tell you today, here are things you can go implement right now for your social media that will work. It's easy to say, go do it. But the question is, is why haven't we already been doing it? Because if we can break through those barriers, then it becomes second nature and we don't even second guess ourselves when we think about social media or any of the other habits that we might be having a bad habit with within our business, right? <laughs> and now I, it comes to the point where, hey, David, well, some people do and they're not getting results. Here's the reality. So many people do use social media and so many people use it wrong. They post 
all the time, right? Like they're posting consistently. Like it's, I know a lot of real estate agents are only posting their open houses and new listings and this and that. Yeah, that gets boring. Cause one, like we'll talk about, it doesn't provide any value to the person necessarily. Two, you're not ever posting about your personal life. You don't seem like a real person. Three, there are strategies. I have paid over $10,000 to learn from an expert just on social media. Like there's a lot of value that, that there's a lot of studying. It's like a craft, just social media. So it makes sense that many of us may not believe in it because of our past experiences and because of our internal blocks. So here are the tips to start maximizing your social media. You guys, we can implement these quickly and easily and it will not take much time. So the first tip when you are posting for social media, you must provide value. Anytime you post, it's gotta have some sort of value. Maybe it's, hey, I went off on the weekend, yada, 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 yada. Here's what I learned. And tell them what you learned. That's providing value and it's personal. Maybe it's about your page. Maybe it's about your business. When you're posting about it, it's got to be valuable. What's something that they can take away? They can learn from it. Maybe it's not even about learning anything. Value doesn't mean necessarily you've got to learn something. Maybe it's something that's funny. And because it provided value, it made them laugh. Or it made them reminisce and made them happy, made them joyful, gets them motivated. Whatever it is, our posts need to be consistently providing value. If you want to write these down, here are three you could do right now. One, how to enjoy your weekend most. I've, I've used this one before. How to, how to enjoy your weekend the most. You could post about um, anything. I mean, how to, how to get into good routines. For example, we're going to talk about that today. How to maximize your Monday mornings to get you energetic and going. Things that people would actually like to implement in their life. How to build better relationships with your family. How to spend the right time. How to have a better work-life balance. How to be happier. Whatever your, your brand is, if whatever your business is, or just personal life, always providing value is key if you want engagement. Okay, the second tip is the 80-20 rule. Now, for all my financial advisors, real estate agents, loan officers on here right now, I hope you guys have heard of this, and yet it's such a great reminder. 80% of our social media should be personal. Like, hey, you know, I'm with the family, we went out to dinner, I'm with friends, I'm having fun, here's what yada 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 I did on the weekend. People want to know about what you did on the weekend. Um, just 80% of it being personal. And then 20% of it being business, okay? Here's the beauty. When we post more personal, we get more engagement. When we get more engagement, our posts go to the top of their timeline. When it goes to the top of their timeline and we share, right, things that are about our business, they're going to see it. And we don't do the same things. They can't expect, you know, oh, David always posts this, right? Whoever, you know, you always, they always post the same thing. Hey. I'm a victim to it too. There's times where I'm posting too many videos or too many similar statuses. It totally happens. And I'm just being super transparent with you guys. It's okay. It's just keeping our eyes on the prize and making sure we're, we're, uh, we're trying to follow that rule as close to it as possible. Okay. Here is the third tip. Use engaging posts. This is my favorite. This is the best thing you could ever do. Engaging posts meaning, hey, what would you do if this happened to you? Or what's one thing that if this happened would make you happier? What's your favorite restaurant? What's your favorite thing to do on the weekends? What's, what, do you, what do you guys' family do for Christmas? Hey, I'm looking for some help here. I need your help. All of those posts will get people engaged. When we do that, just like I said before, it gets us to the top of their timeline. And so when we're at the top of the timeline and we post our business stuff and the things we want to see that we strate uh, strategically post, they see it. Okay. Fourth thing is, is automating it if necessary. I'll be transparent with you guys. I do too. I've got a lot going on. I'm coaching tons of different clients every single day. I'm, I'm getting this ready, a bunch of back end work. I don't have time necessarily to be on Facebook consistently and posting on Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, making and editing videos, right? I hire all that out and then I automate my social media. 
So here's an app. Write this down because it's not on here. Hootsuite. That's one I use right now. H O O T E, I think. S U I T E. Hootsuite. There's another one called Ripple, R I P L. That one will automatically post for you as well. Here's the thing you don't have to do it, just it takes you maybe 30 minutes a week to get all your posts ready and they will automatically post for you. Imagine the engagement and what that could do because social media, it's going to get not only your past clients, everybody that you know, like, and trust that know, like, and trusts you and people in your industry to see your posts, to build better relationships, to get more engagement. This is a habit that will not take much time. So I highly encourage you Think about this being one of the nuggets that you take and you go implement today. Matter of fact, I have a worksheet that I can give you guys. It's a three to four page worksheet from this webinar that you'll have an opportunity to get at the end of this that will help ask you questions, get you prepared to go start implementing and start doing. Okay. And the fifth tip, try and keep it branded only to you. This is something that's very interesting that I learned from an expert in social media. Not sharing too much of, hey, I saw this one post by Darren Hardy or a cook and I like that recipe. Whatever it is, not sharing those to your page because it looks less professional for lead generation purposes when you want to be taken seriously and it doesn't flow with your brand. It takes away from branding to yourself. Okay? Now, I could go in on this all day today on social media. I could do a whole webinar. For the purpose of time, considering we only have 45 minutes on this webinar, I have to keep going. Uh, but like I said, at the end of this, we'll have an opportunity to dive deep if that's something you want to go ahead and do. So the next biggest and bad lead generation habit, I know you guys saw it coming your way, right, is following up. Oh my gosh, this is probably the biggest and baddest lead generation habit habit. I'm going to show you guys how we can turn it into our most powerful habit and how it will change the way we do business. So the first question that comes up is, why are individuals not following up? Why are they not following up? Remember what I just talked about social media? This is what I love about coaching. This is what I get from my professional certification training, all the trainings that I go to to be the best of the best coach. There's blocks, assumptions, interpretations, gremlins, limiting beliefs. For example, maybe people don't follow up enough. A limiting belief many times isn't what you think it is. What a limiting belief truly is, it's a generalized rule that in society, okay, generalized rule in society that is taken to heart and we believe. Here's a limiting belief. Following up too much is pushing sales and people don't like it. Okay. If somebody believes that limiting belief, then I can 100% see why they would not want to follow up. Makes total sense. Because I'll tell you what, if I believe that, I wouldn't want to follow up either. Maybe someone's not following up enough because they've got this gremlin in their head. And this gremlin is telling them, you're not good enough. Like, they're not going to want to work with you. They've interviewed other financial advisors, loan officers, marketing companies, other people and products in different industries, and you're just not the best. Don't follow up. Keep your, right, a gremlin keeps us safe. It doesn't want you to get hurt. It doesn't want you to get rejected. Maybe it's an assumption. Hmm. Well, I've followed up before, and I got yelled at maybe, or I lost the sale because they told me I followed up too much, or they told me I was being annoying and pushy. So I don't want to do that in the future because look what happened to me in the past. I want to avoid that pain and not have that happen again. Right? So there's a, just for that one belief, there's a limiting belief. There's an assumption. There's, uh, there's interpretations. You're over the phone and they're upset with you. So you automatically think it's because you were following up. You interpreted it and jumped to that conclusion. And yet what if it was because they were having a bad day? What if it's because... I don't know. They were getting ready to sit down to dinner with their kids. It's not that they don't like want to talk to you. Maybe it's just that they weren't ready for that conversation and they were a little bit upset. Like we can't make those interpretations. So these are all blocks that we have to break through because like I said, I can tell you, here's how many times you need to follow up. Here's what you need to go do. But I'm more curious as to why we're not already doing it. 
Why are, what's holding us back internally that's stopping us from showing up the way we need to be showing up so we're not, we're not having a bad habit of not following up. We're actually making it our most powerful habit. Let me tell you a quick little story. When I was in real estate, I called somebody 26 times within three months. I'm not sure how many weeks, what, that's 12 weeks, it's a couple times a week, whatever it might be. She never answered the phone. I left a voicemail every single time. I sent her emails, sent her text messages, and guess what? She called me after never responding and said, hey, David, I need you to come over and list my duplex right now. Got the listing the next day on the market the next week and sold it. Wow, right? Let's talk about what kind of limiting blocks could have come up there. Well, I've called her 26 times. She's never answered. I'm going to jump to the conclusion that she is not interested, or I'm going to take that as an interpretation that she's not interested, or maybe a limiting belief that if you follow up three times in society and they don't answer, they're not interested. So there's different ways to break through these blocks. So let's hop into exactly what can we do to start following up better. So we just talked about that mental blocks. And another thing, right? Fear of rejection. Wow. This shows up for us in our business big time. I could probably do a whole webinar just on the fear of rejection because that is such a broad topic. And yet the fear of rejection is tied into other blocks within us that are holding us back in our business from what's happened before, which is why we're scared or nervous or we, we're, we have the fear of rejection. All right, you guys, we're moving quickly, and I apologize, but it's because I put so much content on this webinar. So the first tip, you've got to know that if you don't, somebody else will. If you're not following up, someone else will. We've got to remember that. I mean, that's something you could write down, put it on top of your computer. If I don't follow up, someone else will. If I don't follow up, somebody else will. Let that somebody else be you. Second tip, come from contribution. I'll talk about this a little bit later as well. So coming from contribution means this. One, ask yourself this question, you guys. Everybody right now on this webinar, ask yourself this. Do you believe in yourself? If that's a no, we've got some work to do. Let me know, okay? We'll coach you to have unbeatable confidence. Second, do you believe in your product? If you tell me no, go get another job. Sorry, got to do it. You will never get to the business where you want to be if you don't believe in your product. Okay? If you answered yes and yes, because I know you guys on this webinar are hustlers and are ready to go and are already many times crushing it, then come from a place of contribution where they need you. Look, I just want to help because the last thing I would want is for you, for me not to follow up enough and for you to end up with a bad financial advisor. That's going to give you bad financial advice. It's not going to take care of you the way I can take care of you. The last thing I want is you to go buy a home and get with a loan officer that's going to take advantage of you, not give you the best program, and do a good of a job that I can't. The last thing I would want is for you to end up with a bad real estate agent. So when we can change our mindset, coming from contribution, I believe in myself. I know I can provide the absolute best service, then we can come from a place where we are just contributing. Hey, I'm giving them a call because I really want to help them. I know I can help them. And the last thing I want is for them to end up in a bad situation when I know I can serve them best. So now, how does that feel? Instead of calling, I'm just calling, I want to make that sale, I want to set that appointment, I want to set that appointment. You're calling and, and, and saying, you know, in your head that I just want to help these people. I'm just calling to help. I'm just calling to help. Don't sell, help. Don't sell, help. Okay? Third tip, provide value. This one's really important you guys follow up. The biggest mistakes, you guys, I've coached people making six, seven figures, not seven quite yet. That was a mistake, but multiple six figures in their business. And many times, even when they follow up, they are still saying things like, hey, I just wanted to check in with you and see where everything's at. Hey, just wanted to give you a call following up from the last week. I know we spoke. Hey, guys, those are boring calls. Whether it takes you a weekend to just sit down for an hour and figure out, okay, when I call, what are some excuses I can do to call them to provide the value? 
So now I'm coming from contribution. I just want to help them. Matter of fact, I need to call them because I need to invite them to this event. I need to let them go know what is going on in the city. I need to tell them about, hey, something might happen in the industry. But if you're going to make that jump, that decision soon, I'd rather you make it sooner than later so you don't miss out on X, Y, and Z. Hey, things are changing. We're always providing value. Always. 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 <laughs> I say that because so many times... People know this and they never do it and they say, I'll oh, just follow up and just say, hey, I'm just looking to check in. Be different. Make the commitment today that you will be different. You will not be like the average Joe in that industry that you might be in. You're going to make that change. You're going to come from contribution. I want to help them. I'm going to fanatically follow up with them, whether that means calling them two to three days a week, whatever it might be. And every single time, I will provide them value. Okay, let's go, let's move on. We've gotta keep moving for the time sake. The third biggest bad lead generation habit is the lack of a routine for lead generation. Check out this photo. You know what I love about this photo is where it says routines, it almost looks like a shark just swimming in a circle, getting ready for its food, for its prey. It knows what it's doing. It's in movement, it's in a routine. It's prepared, can predict. New things take you all around and, and you get excited and you just follow it and then it, it doesn't get you and keep you focused. It takes you from here to here to here rather than just keeping you where you need to be going in the right direction. And so with lead generation, we must have a routine. Here's why we've got to have a routine. Because number one, it gives us predictable outcomes. Okay, so... When I know that to get more business, I focus on ads, on advertising, X such and such a day, and I get this many leads, then I do that consistently, I can predict my outcomes. When I know I hit the phones for an hour, two hours, three hours a day, these are my results and how many calls I get. With this many calls, it gets this many appointments, which gets this many deals, which then I now can predict my outcomes. Huge. In business, right, we always want to be able to predict our outcomes, especially when we're entrepreneurs like ourselves and run our own business. It's stressful. It's hard to feel blessed and easier to feel stressed in life when we can't predict our outcomes. So having that routine is going to help predict our outcomes, and yet emotions will never get in the way. This is well overlooked. When we are in a routine, no matter how we feel, we do what is necessary. You know, I wake up at 4.30 to 5 every single morning. I don't care how I feel. I don't care how bad the day was before. I get up and do it. Right when I was in real estate, I lead generated for three and a half hours every single day. I didn't care how I felt. It's just something I did because it was a habit. It's something that we do every single day. It's a routine. Routine. So the emotion part of it doesn't get in the way. When we're not in a routine, this is what happens. We get in this bad habit where we feel upset or however we might feel and we just don't feel like lead generating today. So we make excuses. Right there, there's some internal blocks. Right? Like what's going on internally? What kind of gremlin, limiting belief, assumption, interpretation, what's showing up there for you to feel that way? Maybe you feel that everything's going great and you're like, I don't even need to lead generate today. I've got three appointments. I've got two new clients. I've got something working in the midst of a pipeline or closing today. Huge mistakes, terrible, terrible habits. And finally, you guys, we become more efficient in our business because we can get more done. Does that make sense? We don't have to think about doing that most important thing, which is lead generating and getting more business. So we become more efficient in our business. Okay, we've got to keep moving just because the lack of uh, time. We have about 15 minutes left. Goes by so fast with all this content. So here's a tip. Make it happen at the same time every day. What I don't want you to do is make it longer than one hour. If we're not already in a routine, put it at the same time every single day and don't make it longer than one hour. Once you've had it at one hour, then you can start upping it. And yet, it takes 66 days to create a habitual routine. Many people have the misconception it takes 21 days, and it is false and has been proven wrong. So, first step, 
one hour a day, no more. You can lead generate more if that's something you want to do. So that way you're creating that most powerful habit in your business, yet don't make it at the same time every day for more than one hour until you can consistently do it. Because many times we want to go all in and then we fall back and we had high expectations and didn't meet them. And now we have this assumption from the past that it's going to happen again and we've got to break through it. Okay. When you are in your routine of lead generating, turn off all your emails. Don't check your texts. Don't even go on social media, right? Because they're going to be automated possibly if you decide to use it and uh, make sure you're all in and focused. Okay, you guys, that's the third one. Getting a routine of lead generation will be one of the most powerful things you can do in your business. The fourth biggest bad lead generation habit that we have in our business is the lack of preparation. I'm not going to go too in depth here because like I said, I could do a whole webinar literally on every single one of these topics. The lack of preparation though, I want you to just sit back, whether it means take 10 minutes, 15 minutes and just evaluate. Okay. Sit back and think, how am I preparing for the phone calls I am making? How am I preparing for the appointments I'm going on? How am I preparing when I am going to networking meetings? What habitual habits do I have for preparing and what does that look like? Because we're always on the go, 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 get more business, get more business. And what we have in front of us many times can slip through the cracks because we're not capitalizing on the current opportunities. Because the best future business is the now business. We take care of them well, referrals all day. So evaluate, how are we preparing to serve our clients best? How are we preparing our lead generation? If we're going to call for an hour, how well did we prepare our scripts? How well did we practice? How well did we prepare our call lists? Did we run out of numbers? How well did we prepare that? So just evaluate. That's all I want you to take away from this habit is evaluate. Okay, we're going to move into the, the, the fifth biggest bad lead generation habit, and this is one of my absolute favorites. Okay, let's hop into it. Objection handling. This one is huge, you guys. And this is one of my favorite thing in sales. I've studied sales for years, paid thousands and thousands of dollars to be trained by the best and read so many books and went to so many seminars that objection handling is the best thing. And when you leave today, you're going to have the mindset that I have, the tips and tools to go handle objections. And of course, the first thing I would love to discuss is why in the world are people not handling objections? What is going through their brains? Okay, so that's where the blocks come up. I'm going to show you an example of each block of why people might not handle objections. First thing first, their gremlin gets in the way. They're at the appointment or they're over the phone and they want to set an appointment. And the gremlin's telling them, you're not good enough. <laughs> you're not good enough to help them. They'd be better elsewhere. The gremlin wants to keep us safe, doesn't want to put us out there. You're not good enough. So when they're throwing us objections that they want to think about it, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty high price. The gremlin shuts them up, talks them, you're not good enough. And that's why people don't want to overcome objections. Here's one. Maybe it's an assumption. because. Before, when I tried to overcome objections, they told me I was just too salesy and I lost the sale. Maybe I tried overcoming objections before and it, it totally didn't work. I lost all rapport with them. X, Y, and Z happened. So that's going to happen again in the future. Maybe it's a limiting belief that, you know, if you, you're, that's pushy. To overcome objections in sales is pushy and salesy. If any of those things are running through our heads, of course, we are not going to want to handle objections. So I'm going to give you these tips and tools where you can literally handle any objection. He's excited or what? I'm showing you, you can handle any objection that happens in your business by the time you leave today. Although think about it. What, the reason why I'm a coach is because I believe that a lot of the clients I work with, one of my, my clients is a financial advisor. She's got a multiple six figure business. We started coaching. She doubled her business within three months. And it wasn't because I went in and, right, gave her new strategies, tips, tools, and how to do business better. It was really uncovering those limiting blocks that were connected to her outer goals, helped her show up differently every day, helped her show up to her clients differently every day, 
right? Helped her understand what blocks she had against objection handling. Now she feels comfortable going forward. Even if she didn't have the script, she didn't care because there were no blocks holding her, holding her back. Is that making sense? So here's some reasons why people don't want to overcome objections. And one of them right there on the screen is they don't want to be pushy. It's probably the biggest, biggest limiting block that we have internally as to why we're not handling objections. And that one typically is a limiting belief that overcoming objections is pushy. Another reason is they don't want to force people to buy their products, right? They have this mindset that if I just overcome these objections, I'm just forcing my stuff down their throat. And that's the last thing that I want to do. Maybe they understand why they think someone would want to wait, or at least they think they do. You hear me there, okay? They think they understand why they would want someone to wait. At least they think they do. Here's what I mean. When they say, well, we want to sleep on it and think about it. Many times, literally, people I've worked with that have uh, six-figure, multiple six-figure businesses say, great, well, when would you like me to follow up? Are you serious? You guys, there's something going on. Those are surface level objections, number one. When they want to think about it, they're, ah, hey, I get it. I'd want to think about it too. Well, you don't even know what in the world they want to think about. Maybe it's the price. Maybe it's because they want to talk to other people. Maybe it's because they just had one question they wanted to discuss. Maybe you could have that conversation with them. Okay, so that's why people don't um, work to overcome objections. So the first step is, and I'm, I'm hoping you guys know this answer, if the chat box was working like I thought it would be working, I would ask it and then ask you guys to answer it. What is an objection? When I understood this, my entire business changed. An objection is a request for more information, okay? So when they say, you know, I just wanna think about it, they're really saying, you know, I need more information to take a step forward. And we're not even sure what kind of information that they need. Sorry, I just found out that there is a chat box on here. So I was looking at it and it popped up. <laughs> right? So it's a request for more information. When we can have that mindset, then we can overcome anything. We, have, we feel different the way we show up. So first thing first. We have got to come from contribution. The same thing we do when we follow up, we have got to come from contribution, okay? When we're overcoming this, since we know it's a request for more information, we've got to say, you know what? I really want to help them. They think the price is too high. I want to know why the price is too high, how I can show them what the benefits really are, if that makes sense. We just want to help them. We want to provide the most value. If they say, hey, I want to think about it, Instead of being pushy and thinking, okay, well, what exactly, you know, what, what do you want to think about? That's a great question, but have the mindset where we come from contribution thinking, okay, they want to think about it. I'm totally okay with that. I would really be interested to learn what exactly they are looking to think about. Hmm. They think the price is too high. I'm really curious why they think the price is too high. Hmm. They have questions about my plan. I'm really curious why. Instead of just taking it and running with it and tell them you'll follow up. Because so many people, so many people I talk to just, they say, okay, when would you like me to call you back? And that is huge. The second thing, we have got to practice, 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 practice. We're running low on time, so I've got to push through this, you guys. We've got to practice, 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 overcoming the objections and what I'm going to show you right here. So write these steps down. Like I said, you can go back to this webinar. I'm going to send you the replay that you guys can have the opportunity to go back and look at this. But you've got to practice this. They don't come easy until we do it consistently and make it second nature. Okay, first step to overcoming an objection, acknowledge and validate. When they say, hey, um, we want to think about it. Acknowledging saying, got it. You want to make sure you guys talk it over and, and think about it. That's acknowledging, repeating what they said then validating it. And it makes sense you feel that way because this is a huge decision. So if they say, hey, the price, we're just not sure, it's, it's pretty expensive. Hey, I get it, you guys are worried about the price. <laughs> Most of my clients are, it makes sense you would be. It is a hefty price. If they say, well, we wanna talk to other advisors, loan officers, real estate agents, you would say, got it, it sounds like you wanna weigh out your options. That makes sense, this is a huge decision. Okay, that's acknowledge and validating. For the sake of time, I've gotta keep going. 
okay? Second thing, you pinpoint the objection. We only pinpoint the objection when we're going in for the close, okay? So when we're going in for the close, we'd say, if they say, we want to talk to a few other people, you would acknowledge and validate. Hey, I get it. You want to weigh out your options before making a decision. That makes sense because this is a huge decision. Other than that, is there anything else that would hold you back from moving forward today? Here is why we ask that, because we get the permission to move forward, okay? When we ask that, we get the permission to close on them after we overcome the objection. Now, if objections are coming up in the midst of conversation, that may not be appropriate, so follow your intuition. Got it? Third thing, respond. So, hey, it sounds like you guys wanna weigh out your options before moving forward. It makes sense, because this is a huge decision. Other than that, is there anything else that would hold you back from moving today? They give you something else, you'd acknowledge and validate that and say, other than that and this, is there anything else? Then you'd respond, right? The feel felt found. I get it. I know exactly how you feel. Most of my clients, they felt the same way. When they took that step, this is what they found out. They felt the same way. Matter of fact, they used their credit cards to, to help them you know, make that decision to move forward. And here's what happened to their business. Right, here's what they found out, that price for this, this loan program, it, here's what they found out, what it did for them, whatever it is. Or go back to their big why. Can we just revisit why we're here today? What the goal was, because you mentioned you wanted this, this is what it would do for your life, and if you didn't get this, this would happen. Or the pain versus pleasure. This is where you respond, and this is where you guys are an expert in your business, and you should know how to respond to this, okay? Finally, you confirm them with a tie down. Hey, I get how you feel. Many of my clients, they felt the same way. And here's what, I, what they found out. This is making sense, right? Nod your head. This is making sense, right? Yeah. You see how this fits in with your plan, don't you? Mm -hmm. you, you understand what I'm saying here and how it, how it fits in what you're looking for, right? Time down, then close them. Perfect. So did you want to do this or this? So guys, when we come from contribution, I just want to help them. Help them figure out more information. One more reason, because we really are short on time here, that we acknowledge and validate is because it puts them at ease. Tell me how this sounds. If you say, hey, David, uh, we want to think about it and talk to other financial advisors. Oh, okay, so what do you think those advisors are going to say? Hey, David, we want to talk to other loan officers. Okay, so what do you think those loan officers are going to do? Hey, we want to talk to other agents. Okay, so what do you think that they're going to do differently? Versus, David, we want to talk to other real estate agents. Hey, I get it. You guys want to weigh out your options before making a decision. I would want to do the same thing. It makes sense because this is a big deal. Builds that rapport. It puts them at ease and puts you on the same side of the court. Yeah, puts you on the same side of the court where you can have that intimate conversation. There's no net in between you. You guys are just hitting the ball back and forth. You can get together, get intimate, and really build that relationship, and, and, and they'll know, like, and trust you. Okay, so you guys, just to recap, we talked about following up. We talked about social media. We talked about getting in a routine. We talked about preparation and objection handling. That is a ton of information. I hope you guys got value and, and found one thing that you're going to go implement. There's actually an opportunity where we can dive in a little bit deeper, as well as giving you a worksheet that will help you launch. It's the five biggest bad lead generation habits launch sheet that I created personally for just you guys that are attending this webinar. So what now? Go implement one or two things that we've discussed today. Pick something and implement it. Pick one or two things and implement it. Please don't take all of it. If anything, write down in a couple of weeks, I want to revisit this. Implement something today. Don't overwhelm yourself because there was so much content. Like I said, I literally could do five different webinars and go in really deep with you guys, help break those blocks over the webinar and make some huge progress. I want you to do this. Fill out, it's calendly.com slash David W. Durham. Fill out a, three, a free 30-minute phone call with me. Let's talk about how you might be sabotaging yourself in your business. It doesn't have to be about what we discussed today. And if it is something you want to do and talk about what we discussed, we absolutely can do that and figure out how we can incorporate it in your business. This 30-minute phone call is just for me a way to help you discover where you might be sabotaging and what we can do to help move you forward. In addition to that, if you guys do this within the next 60 minutes, I will send a link to your email right after this webinar. I will send you the five biggest bad lead generation habits launch sheet. It's a three to four page worksheet 
that you can do that will help answer some questions and help move you forward from this 45 minute webinar. And finally, if you guys say, yeah, David, I get it, you coach. Like what in the world is a coach? You guys, a coach isn't to help someone take a broken business and build it to something bigger. A coach is to take success and help you optimize it. A coach is to take you from where you're at to where you want to be or from where you want to be to become even more happier and more joyful in your business. It's all progressive. It's not because you don't know what to do or how to do it. A coach takes you to that next level. If you are frustrated in your business, it helps make you hit those breakthroughs and take your business to the next level. Even if it's at a high level and you want it to be even bigger, that's what a coach does. Helps optimize you, right? We're functional here. We've got a good business. How can we optimize that? So if we go ahead and do that 30 minute phone call for free, it's gonna be valuable. You will walk away from that phone call with some nuggets. If you decide to pursue coaching because of this webinar, I will offer you a free four hour VIP day. That's a $1,200 value. Four hours and what we do is we generate a blueprint of how we can get you traction in your business in the areas that you need it. You can have that or you can have two complimentary sessions and that's gonna be up to you. So in total, a free 30 minute phone call, what's included with the coaching is a weekly 45 minute phone call, recorded phone calls, email follow up and 24 seven communication. So that's a total of a free 30 minute discovery call, a free five biggest lead generation habits launch sheet, and finally a free VIP day or two complimentary coaching sessions. And of course, a 45 minute phone call every single week you can record the calls for all the breakthroughs that you will have, so you can go back and review them. Follow up with email to take all the notes that we've discussed, so you can maximize your opportunity on every call, and I'll be there every single step of the way. Thank you guys so much for hopping on this webinar with me today. I had tons of fun, it was my first one, so I thank you for bearing with me. It is uh, 10.45 right now, 10.47, so I apologize. I went over two minutes. I will go ahead and stay on here if you guys have any questions. You guys are free to go. In the next 10 minutes, you will have that email in your inbox. Have an amazing day, you guys. And for everybody else that wants to hop on here and stay on here, I will answer any questions that you might have. And I'll also get out of this screen share. So here we are, and I found the chat box. Do you guys have any questions? If not, you are free to go. Just put in the chat box whatever questions you have. I want to make sure you get them answered before you leave. All right. I'm not seeing any questions coming up just yet, so I'll give it a couple more moments. Hey, Rodrigo, it's my pleasure. Thank you for hopping on here, my man. Hope you got some amazing value. Like I said, there was so much content on this webinar. The future ones I'm going to be doing, we're going to be able to get much more deep and in depth. So I'll be sure to keep you updated for any up and coming webinars. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, I've absolutely thought about that. Recording other webinars, this one actually is recorded, which is why I'm gonna have the opportunity to give it to you guys for a replay. Yeah, that is something I'll do for sure. But there's a lot more to come. I have so many topics about you know, overcoming fear, overcoming rejection, getting ourselves out of our own way in our business. I, could, I really wanna do a whole webinar on overcoming objections, do a whole webinar on follow-up. Um, possibly a whole webinar on social media. So there is a lot of topics that I want to cover and provide just as much value as possible. All right, you guys. Well, I don't see any more questions, so I am going to go ahead and get going. Thank you so much for attending. Once again, I'm your performance coach, David Durham, and have an amazing rest of your day.